Hi, this is Simon with Next RC. This is a setup tutorial video on how to set up an RX2 sim uh, to your simulator for use. Um, this is being done with the Spectrum DX8 connecting to the RX2 sim using a Spectrum satellite. Um, you can use different radios to do this, but this is the method for a DX8. Um, you can adapt the use of this because it's very simple on the different radios. Um, I'm going to post some screenshots now of what your radio settings need to be in a DX8. This will also work for a DX9, uh, DX7S uh, or any of the Spectrum radios really or any any radio in particular because all it's doing is using throttle curves to give, give you differences. So the first thing you want to do is you want to connect whatever method it is you're using to connect RX2 SIM. Connect to your RX2 SIM, plug it into the computer. Come to this menu, Game Controllers, by searching Game Controllers and setting up a USB con game controller in Windows. Uh, this is a Windows tutorial, I'm afraid I don't have a Mac in order to do one for a Mac, I'm sorry. Uh, once you're in here, if you just select the RX2 SIM and click Properties and make sure everything is working as it should. Make sure everything goes to the full limits. If it doesn't, then you'll need to calibrate it by clicking Settings and Calibrate. And if you just calibrate that, once you've calibrated, uh, you need to copy the radio setup that I have posted pictures of. I will post them again. Uh, what this does is all of your normal channels for your pitch, your aileron elevator, and your rudder are all done normally just by programming it through uh, next I'll just show you that okay so if you just go into the menu and click input device uh, calibrate input device start calibration and if you just select the type of device that you're using so transmitter it defaults your dead zone down to two click next and it'll ask you to move your collective to the maximum position. Next, I'm sure you'd have been through this before. Uh, next, if you click right and then left. And if you just follow the pictures on the bottom here, uh, before you go into the menu, you can click on buttons, uh, show flight sticks on here. There's a menu for doing so. Uh, right aileron we're going to, left aileron. Uh, forwards and back and then everything's back in the middle and if you click finish right the next setup is for setting up three different flight modes and also throttle hold on the correct switches of your transmitter so if you click buttons first and any channels that are jittering so if you can see these channels here they're jittering on and off if you can turn them off And if you can also turn off channels, all the channels that relate to your controls, so the, the ones that are for your sticks, so your aileron, elevator, rudder, and your collective, if you switch all of those off as well, just to stop any interfering when it comes to putting your different thr uh, flight modes in. Uh, so what you need to click next is functions. If you see, mine are already assigned here. <clears throat> and they're all assigned to, to RC4, which would be your throttle channel. Um, if you haven't got your radio set up the way that my screenshots dictated at the moment, when you move your stick up and down, RC4 will follow the, the pitch channel, which is RC6. Um, if, you, if, that, if that happens, you're not going to get three flight modes because you need to put flat throttle curves into your radios. This is why you need to have a helicopter set up in order for you to do it in different flight modes. So normal mode needs to be flat 33%. Uh, idle 1 needs to be 66% flat. Idle 2 needs to be 100% flat. And throttle hold needs to be a flat 100. Yeah, flat 0, sorry. Uh, and what that's what this does is it uses them values. So when I click the switch from your idle up, it goes from the bottom, which is minus twelve, to, to 
plus 12 to plus 38 which is so that's at the lowest that's 33 percent 66 percent 100 percent and then throttle hold which overrides all of the channels overrides all of the flight modes and puts it to zero which is minus 38 so what you need to do is in order to do these if i'll just reset all of these and redo mine from scratch so what you need to do first is you need to be in normal mode all of the switches back and if you click on uh, auto rotation slider click it once move this to auto rotation slider to maximum position and click next so click your throttle hold to activate it click next and it'll say there minus rc minus 38 click finish if you leave it in throttle hold now uh, leave it activated in throttle hold and if you click flight condition 2 the way that I do mine is I use flight condition 4 because the flight condition 4 in default models is usually the most agile and uh, best set of model uh, for 3d I use that as idle 2 so flight condition is idle 2 flight condition 3 is idle 1 and flight condition 1 is normal mode if you had a four position switch you could use flight condition one on the same switch but most radios have a three position switch uh, you can assign a different switch if you really do want a flight condition one as well so you'll see you can assign that to the gyro channel or the auxiliary two channel auxiliary three channel whichever one comes up on your radio so i'll move some of your switches here i could assign it to rc8 here uh, but i only use the three, fl three flight modes so i'll just set it up like this Again, if you just make sure your throttle hold's activated at this point and it's at minus 38 on your channel, which indicates your throttle hold and your th throttle channel. And once it's activated, if you click slider on flight condition two, move the condition, move the flight condition slider to the position on and press next. So what you're gonna do is release the throttle hold, which will put it to minus 12, which is the position of normal mode on my radio. Click next. And click finish and if you look that puts it to minus 13 which is minus 12.96 on here which is minus 13 is a makes no difference uh, flight condition 3 which is going to be my idle 1 if you leave it in normal mode right now click slider move it to idle 1 click next click finish and that will assign it to idle 1 which is plus 12 and then we have flight condition four, which is going to be my idle two position. So I'm going to click on that the slider, move the switch into idle two, click next, and click finish. And then if you look, it'll go between all the through the different flight modes, and all of the values here are all being recorded. If you just click the arrow and close it down, and go to a helicopter. Uh, what you'll need to do is in order to get the three flight modes is you'll need a, a three different model setups so what i have in this case is a gr vibe 90 night row i have idle one which is flight condition two as i said flight condition one i don't really use so flight condition two i've set for 1700 rpm flight condition one i've set for 1900 um and also different pitch you can have completely different everything you can have different power different head speeds different weights different rates different expos uh, and then you can move on uh, to idle 2 which is 2100 rpm again all my personal settings in there and I'm in normal mode right now if I click my throttle hold switch it kills the engine if I release the throttle hold, it goes back on again. This is normal mode. So this is my 1700 RPM model, which is nice for just doing smooth circuits and generally pottering about. Uh, it's great for smooth flying. Uh, then I can move into idle one, which is 1900 RPM, which is a bit better for 3D and give the heli a bit of a bashing, bogs a bit, you can see and then again idle 2 2100 rpm really agile really uh, powerful setup and whatever your personal preference is, is you know if you want three different 2100 setups you can program it to whatever you want all right so that's a tutorial for uh, from myself thanks for watching take care bye